Kevin, are you going to the game tonight? I'm not sure yet. I need to find out, like, my ride situation and stuff. Are you going, Nick? Uh, I thought I was going to be a ride. You want to go with me? <laughs> yeah, I'll go with you, I guess. All right. I'm cool now. If I have to. Great. All right, a bunch of people I'll going tonight? My game. Oh! I am. I am. It's gonna be really cool. It's a really different experience from here, you know. What position do you play again? Linebacker. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you're gonna have to eat a lot. <laughs> gains. Yes. It's, all, it's all about the gains. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that like Cal Poly and some other schools? Yeah. Cool. Mm -hmm. Cal Poly is awesome. Mm -hmm. So good. Yeah. So much. Yeah. Maya, yeah. where are you thinking about going? I really want to go to Berkeley, but awesome. we'll see. Mar March 30th is when it is. Berkeley, you're really cool. So, yeah. I like love high school, but I'm just ready to like go do something yeah. different. Yep. Yeah. yeah. I feel like LA is a perfect distance where you're like getting yeah. out of your bubble, you know, but you can still come yeah. home. <laughs> a lot. How do you, <laughs> you just never learn? No, I did, but I'm just not it's the not most well. skilled. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> bye, bye. Bye, guys. Bye. 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 Do the set. Oh, oh, take the set. Set. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Bye. 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 Yeah. I'm going to 
brother. I'm gonna take you out, okay? We're gonna put this board right underneath you. Go this way. Prolonged extrication. We got called out. Patient was unresponsive. GCS of three to four. Let's get a chest X-ray, pelvis. Can you get a second eyes. ID in her? Can you move your okay. arms and legs? No. Dagger. Again. Let's get a chest X-ray, a pelvis X-ray. Life share. Yeah, this is probably not survivable, unfortunately. Doctor, just so you're aware, there was a second patient in the vehicle being extricated. We're not sure of their condition. Okay, we'll be here. Nick, I'm Dr. Schroeder. This is Dr. Greg Lack with Chicago Hospital in La Jolla. What do you hurt? My neck hurts. I can't move anything. Okay. Try to move your right arm. Can you move your legs at all for me? No. Can you feel me down here at all? No. Can you squeeze my hand? No. You heard back here? Yeah. Okay. Dr. Schwedig, I'm the trauma surgeon taking care of the son. Um, Unfortunately, the accident broke his neck. Um, the number of the bones from one to seven, and he broke and dislocated them between five and six. So we're going to get you ready for surgery. The spine surgeon will. We'll get your neck and stuff and then we'll help you get better. So he's paralyzed? He's paralyzed from the neck down. Sorry. I'm Dr. Schwendig. Um, you are? Hi, Mom. Nice. Uh, okay. And Mom and Dad are yes. right now. Okay. Um, I'm not going to beat around the bush. Um, Kevin uh, received a, a fatal brain injury earlier this evening. Um, she got to us about an hour ago. Um, we worked on her for at least half an hour, but there was nothing that we could do, and she died about half an hour ago. I wish I could tell you something different. I wish I could say that there was um, something that we could do that would have changed things, 
um, but unfortunately there was not. Do you have any questions? Anybody else die? to the coroner's office. Um, we can have somebody come escort you over there so you can help identify him. I just oh want God. you to know that, you know, he didn't suffer. Oh my God. It was very difficult. Oh. Unfortunately, it appears that it is a DUI related collision. It was driving, it was in the car. Mom, yeah, I was driving and I, I got into a crash and I was drinking and I think someone died and I, I don't know. I think other people got hurt and I'm sorry. Come on, hang on the phone, it's time to go. I love you, Mom. Let's go. Officer Parent from the California Highway Patrol. I'm here to inform you that Leon Lusowitz was involved in a DUI collision where he suffered major injuries and died as a result. Uh, Julia is survived by her parents, Linda and Patrick. She was involved in sports, basketball, volleyball, and softball. She loved reading and writing. She planned on going to college to be an actress or an event planner. Gavin is survived by his parents, Michelle and Robert. His hobbies were photography and running. His future plans were to go to Stanford, major in human biology. His best traits that he was a strong leader. Her best personality traits was she was compassionate for others, wonderful sense of humor, hard worker, intelligent and sensitive. She will definitely be missed. Thank you. We're going to go ahead and call the case of the people of the state of California versus Matrone. We have Mr. Gage Matrone, correct, president court, appearing for sentencing. Mr. Matrone, you've been found guilty by a jury of your peers of the following charges. Number one, vehicular manslaughter as to the decedent victim, Cammie Hoban. 
The second charge was for vehicular manslaughter as to Kevin Mesa. The third conviction was driving under the influence, 23153A and B, as to injuries including paralysis as to Nick Madgett. And to those charges, my understanding, we do have a victim impact statement that will be presented by the decedent's mother, Mrs. Hoban. Ms. Hoban, if you could come forward. I know you're young, but I just want you to know how this impacted our family. You have taken away our daughter and a sister. And our family will never be the same because of this bad decision that could have been avoided. And my heart is just broken. Thank you. All right, thank you. All right, Mr. Mertron, I'm going to ask you to stand and face the court, please. With regards to two charges of vehicular manslaughter, one relating to Cammie Hoban and one relating to Kevin Mesa, uh, the court will impose a sentence of five years as to Cammie Hoban, five years as to Kevin Mesa, and one year as to Nick Madgett for a total of 11 years in state prison and committing you to the California Department of Corrections. Because of your reckless behavior, you have killed two people and paralyzed a student who had a full scholarship to play football at the University of Chicago. So as you serve these 11 years in custody, you'll be reminded every morning of these two individuals' death and Mr. Madgett's lifelong imprisonment in a wheelchair because of your complete lack of thought or foresight and getting behind the wheel of an automobile while drinking alcohol. It is my hope that each day that you serve, you will remember Nick in a wheelchair and Kevin and Cammy in their caskets with no future and no hope. I'm going to order you remanded to custody to serve your 11-year sentence. Good luck to you. This court stands in recess. Students went to a retreat last night. They wrote letters to their parents as if they were actually dead. And today we have Colin Wagstaff to read the letter he wrote to his parents. Mom, Dad, today I died, but I just want you to know. Mom, everything you do for me and everything leading up to the person I am now has been because of you. You transformed me into a loving person, a gentleman, and a light to be around. Dad, you are my hero. My dream was to be able to grow up and buy you a Ferrari, because that's your dream car, and a person like you should, all, should have everything you've ever dreamed of having. And if I had more room, I would give more words, but Case and Rachel, you are the best thing that ever happened to me. Case, you are my best friend, and I hope I did enough to be the best brother for you. Rachel, I love you the most, Jess. Tell your future boyfriends that I will be there to beat them up. Love you guys. See you soon. Call on.
Our next speaker will tell you his story, and I'm sure he wishes more than anything in this world that his story was make-believe like today is. Jacob Wallace and his son Isaiah. And now I'm about to talk about October 18th, 2010, and what happened. It was a everyday morning routine. Isaiah getting up, running from his mom, hiding in the closet because he didn't want to get dressed. So that was the last memory I had of him being that normal kid. She took him over to uh, her mother's house. Uh, her mom and her dad were the ones that watched him while we were at work. Um, they had an everyday routine, taking a walk to the park to go play. And on that day, nine o'clock in the morning, they were almost to the park. And they just happened to be in the way of the teenage drunk driver. He was trying to get away from the cops, and that's when they plowed into him and his grandfather. He was in a stroller, strapped in. He was thrown out of his stroller into a stop sign, and the stop sign was knocked down. That's how much force there was. About an hour later, I got another phone call from Isaiah's grandmother. She was crying hysterically, and all she could tell me that Isaiah and his grandfather were hit by a car and he wasn't moving at all. That was the worst phone call you could ever get. My fiance was working down the street. We're about half a mile away, a mile away. Um, I told her what happened. We're both crying hysterically, not knowing what to do. And we finally got to Children's Hospital and we were finally able to go into the room to see my son, and he did not look like the son I left that morning. He was paralyzed from the chest down. He was internally decapitated, hooked up to all kinds of wires, all kinds of machines. He was in an induced coma. Um, and there was just, just not a way you would like to see your kid. He was only 18 months old. And about a week after that, he was making progress. He started breathing on his own, and he was taking his own breaths. And we knew that that's when we knew there was still a fight in him. and that there was still a fight in him and that he's not gonna give up, so we're not gonna give up. It was tough having to live in the hospital and not just that, living next to the person who did that to my son because it's right by the juvenile hall. And every day seeing him like that would just get me mad and angry. So this is the life that my family lives now because of the teenage drunk driver and what he decided to do that day because he decided to get behind that wheel and drive drunk. This is reality, ladies and gentlemen. Like I've said, today and yesterday was make-believe. This is reality due to that teenage driver's decision to drink and drive. Our next speaker is Eva Sophia Mejia, and she's going to read a poem for you. I went to a party, Mom. I remember what you said. You told me not to drink, Mom, so I drank soda instead. I made a healthy choice, and your advice to me was right. Now the party is ending, Mom, and the kids are driving out of sight. As I got into my car, I knew I'd get home in one piece. I never knew it was coming. 
something I expected least. I started to drive away, Mom, but as I pulled out onto the road, the other car didn't see me and hit me like a load. As I lay there on the pavement, Mom, I hear the policeman say, the other guy is drunk, and now I'm the one who will pay. <laughs> I have one last question, Mom, before I say goodbye. I didn't drink and drive, so why am I the one to die? Just want to say that that concludes our uh, funeral service. But before we go, before we move, before we do anything, uh, I just want to leave you with a couple of closing remarks and some thoughts for our uh, Maverick family. Unfortunately, when I was in high school, I had to go through this multiple times with friends that I lost along the way. It is the most devastating thing that can happen to a school to go through this. And so whether you're in 12th grade, 11th grade, 10th grade, or 9th, it is my hope going through these past two days, it leaves an impression in your mind that you have no reason to get in a car or get behind a wheel and to have an impact on your life or an impact on another family's life. And it's my hope for all, each and every one of you this morning for you to leave here more informed, making better decisions, but most importantly, to take care of one another, to make sure on a Friday and a Saturday night that you're making decisions for the best interest of yourself, for your best friends, but for the community. And when you have that sticker on the back of your car, and when you come to school every morning, and when you leave every afternoon, that you are part of this family, and that you are gonna make the best decisions that will not only impact you in a positive light, but it will impact our school in a positive light. 